what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest rising OS this is the version 1.4 and the code name is Elysium this is the 14th September 2023 build also includes the G apps of course and I have flashed this ROM with the latest MIUI 14 firmware as mentioned if you don't know what I'm talking about you can check out the flashing guide from the video's description now let me show you the settings panel this is how it looks like and actually you will get the about section in this top part I have customized the settings panel that's why it looks like this but this if you click on this Redmi Note 10 Pro you will go into the about phone section in here it shows rising UI 1.4 for Redmi Note 10 Pro it shows official and by Ajit so huge thanks to the developers of this ROM if you scroll down you will get the Android version as Serum SUR 13 and the rising OS version is also mentioned again 1.4 Elysium and the security patch here you will get latest of September 5th 2023 and that's just huge because even on like Poco F5 and stuff the latest Evolution X does not include the September security patch but here as of today you are actually getting September security patch with this rising OS and that's just awesome. In the build version you can see the whole build name and you will see the stock kernel is the 4.14 Aginsa kernel. Here in the system settings this is how it looks like and we have the buttons and first we have the invert layout then the power menu and in here you can enable the advanced restart if you want. Let me go back we have the long press power button toggle torch. Auto Automatically turn off torch option is there and we have the wake device answer call control playback then the keyboard cursor control show volume panel on the left side and stuff all these functionalities with the click to your personal screenshot. Let me go back and we get a system profiles you can enable it if you want then we get the gestures right here we have the quick tap action and this is pretty much the back tap you get plethora of options with this we have the quickly open camera as well. Then we have the system navigation gestures in the settings of it. We have the navigation hint and the pill length and radius customization. This is how it looks with the like maximum options. We have the swipe to invoke assistant as well. And this is actually working perfectly fine. We have the left edge right edge customization. The two button and three button navigation is also there. One handed mode and it is actually there. And we have the show notifications as well. So if I pull down on the navigation bar, as you can see, it actually opens up the quick setting panel just like this. Let me go back and we have the prevent ringing option as well and again the one hand mode is also working fine no issues. We have the USB configuration you can set it to file transfer for convenience then we also get a rising OS updated you can check for updates from here and you can also do a system backup from here the Google App Data backup stuff and let me tell you the Google App Data backup worked perfectly fine for me with this ROM no problem so far. In the thermal profiles we do get the thermal profiles of course and you can set per app to benchmark camera browser dialer and the gaming and streaming options now let me talk about the home screen this is how it looks like and i have been using the nothing os wallpaper and you can see in the wallpaper section let me actually show you this if you go into the change wallpapers we get the feathers emoji workshop then the curated culture bloom and all these options like the living universe and stuff but also you will get the nothing one wallpaper i mean nothing phone one wallpapers like these ones also, you will get the Nothing Phone 2 wallpapers as well. It shows Nothing 2.0 and here I'm using this wallpaper but you can also choose these wallpapers if you want. So yeah, plethora of options are there in terms of the wallpapers I have to say and if you want your OS to look more like Nothing OS, this is one of the best ROM that you can flash. But for the wallpaper and basic colors over here, you can choose up to 16 colors for the wallpaper and basic colors or even more than that. We have the dark theme, the shortcuts and the app grid is there you can change it up to 6 by 10 and in terms of shortcuts you can change it between these many options for the left and right shortcut of the lock screen to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page and the scrolling it's pretty smooth no problems whatsoever actually the 120 hertz here is actually working fine you do not need to worry about that and swiping up will get you to the app drawer swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel and let me show you the battery widget and stuff everything is working fine just notice how smoothly the widget works so no issues whatsoever that you will face with the widgets so yeah it's a really great experience even the subscriber count widget and the clock widget and stuff will be working fine if you add them no problem so far and one of the best features over here is the stock launcher because you are getting the Ortos launcher by default and even in the recent panel just notice how many options are there I haven't enabled all the things but yeah let me show you we have the screenshot right here lock app option this is locked in memory and we have the split screen and the Google Lens option. Also, we have the clear all option right here and you will get to see the RAM usage status on the bottom right here. And this launcher offers one of the most amount of customization that I have seen that I have to say recently. In the icons, we have the icon pack, the themed icons, apply themed icons to app drawer and the monochrome theme, etc. And we have the home screen customization. We have the add app icons to the home screen, lock layout, double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen, wallpaper scrolling and zooming, parallax, page center, and all these customizations that you can see from right here. 
and in the gesture settings this is huge we have this shake gesture so let me show you if i just enable this value one and if i just go back to the home screen let me show you how it works so even when you have the phone like unlocked normally and if you just shake once as you can see the torch has turned on here and if you just shake once again as you can see the torch has turned off so this is like the moto gesture so this is really handy and you can definitely use this particular feature if you want with this particular launcher and that's just huge then on three you have the skip music track and stuff so you can choose it whatever you like and here we have app drawer settings we have the app search bar then the icon labels in drawer row height and the background opacity etc the recent panel customization here you can enable the memory info the clear all the shake phone to clear in the recent panel you can enable this feature if you want you have to toggle this one and we have the kill app option and the other options like the lens pin up screenshot split app etc options let me go back we have the miscellaneous settings we have the use taskbar allow home screen rotation and the launcher vibration intensity then the hidden and protected apps so you can lock particular apps with this particular feature also we have the session disabling option then the background blur depth action toast and the restart option and to show you guys how minimal is this from this actually is all the apps which are present right out of the box. So this ROM offers almost no bloatware. If you're noticing this fresh walls and the Pixart app there, that's because I was restoring my Google app data backup. So most of the apps you are noticing right here, other than these two are the stock apps of this ROM. And this is again, even in the G apps included variant. So that's awesome. And this is how the Dolby Atmos interface actually looks like. We have the base enhancer, then you can actually switch this presets to music, custom movie, dynamic, etc. So yeah, you do get Dolby Atmos right out of the box. Also, one more thing is that you get a uh, like dialer over here. This is the Oxygenos kind of dialer. Let me show you the settings. If you go into the sound settings, we do have the auto call recording option. So you can set the format and even enable this auto call recording toggle. So you do get the auto call recording option over here. And also you get a contacts app and the messaging app, all those things. Now let me show you the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like. And you can actually customize it. I have customized it. And this is how the background blur looks like over here i have enabled that and here let me show you the toggles that i have added and the animation that you're noticing you can also customize this i'll show you this and we have the wi-fi mobile data the bluetooth toggle the flashlight auto rate nightlight hotspot google home and if you're noticing this animation definitely looks so dope i have to say and we have the battery saver the screen recorder feature is also there we have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time the data saver dark theme extra dim and always on display you can toggle it for charge and for normal as well we have the ambient display heads up then the refresh rate do not disturb nearby share airplane mode screencast and the one-handed mode as well and in the power menu this is how it appears and if you tap on restart of course if you have advanced reboot enabled you will get to see directly rebooting option to the recovery or fast boot from right here and even the brightness slider i have customized it now in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the brightness level adaptive brightness the lock screen settings right here and we have the face unlock kind of when swiping up option right here control from lock device for the google home stuff and we have the ambient display as well i have enabled the pickup i'll show you this it is actually working and we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes we have the screen attention as well we have the dark theme option right here and there is a pure black or pitch black mode if you want to use that we have the display size and text option you can customize this and we have the night light you can actually schedule it and change the intensity from here the live display option is there and there is a color calibration mode let me go back to the colors you can have it on boosted saturated or natural i have been using it with a boosted one and of course you can change the rgb and we have the rotation settings and in here we have 180 degree stuff then we have the minimum refresh rate you can actually change it to 120 hertz if you want to have 120 hertz all the time and we also have the refresh rate toggle right here in the quick setting panel as well you can edit that and you have the 120 hertz working perfectly fine and we have the display cutout the screen saver double tap to wake allow window level blurs double tap to sleep and the wake of unplug and even the desktop mode is there you need an app separately on your pc or laptop now in the battery settings this is how it looks like now the batteries animation and stuff it's really good once you go into the settings but i would say i do miss the like battery charging cycle the current or design battery capacity those things you cannot really see over here but at least you do get to see the battery temperature so that's good and we have the batteries like level over here this is a battery bar and if you scroll down more we have the battery usage and the adaptive charging mode then the view usage option is there then the battery saver charging control is also there if you enable this this has this charging mode we have this automatic scheduling option and the custom scheduling option in the limit charging mode so you can enable it if you want 
let me go back we have the adaptive preference as well and the app refresh rate you also get and this is really cool that you can set per app refresh rate to 30 50 60 or 90 or even 120 hertz you can definitely choose that from here now let's talk about the battery life well i would say the battery life it doesn't show here properly because i wasn't using this rom for a really long time but with my experience i would say overall it can definitely give you six to seven hours of screen on time without any problems you won't be facing any issues with six to seven hours of screen on time it will be decent if you have a two and a half years old battery or your device is more than two and a half years old like mine then you will get about like six and a half to seven hours of screen on time pretty easily the screen of here it shows three days and the combined use it here it shows 32 hours so that's just huge amount of numbers in the health section we have the battery health as 73 percent because again my battery has degraded quite a lot and with that seven hours of screen on time it's pretty decent in my opinion and the fast charging and stuff should be working perfectly fine no need to worry about that in the sound and vibration settings, we have the media, call, ring, etc. Volume controls. If we scroll down more, we have the do not disturb the phone ringtone. Spatial audio option is also there. And we have the media, then the system haptics option. And in here, you can change the vibration intensity of the whole UI. And we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option. Then if you scroll down more, we have the part app volume control. Screen locking sound, touch sound, charging sound, etc. Then the live caption now playing. And the me sound enhancer is also there. You can enable it. And with that, we have the youth edition options and stuff. And the sound quality for the headphone jack, the Bluetooth and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. No issues. And the choose preset option is there. Also, the scene options are there. Let me go back. We have the clear speaker option. You can enable it if you want. And there is the haptic feedback. You can change the whole UI intensity with this. Now, let me show you the security settings. In here, if you go into the settings of it, we have the quick unlock. Also, we get the app lock right here in the security settings. You do not have to actually go into the more settings to get the app lock. This is good. Also, in the face unlock and fingerprint settings, if you go into the pixel imprint, you will get this touch to unlock feature. You can just disable this one so that it, the fingerprint scanner will only register whenever you press on the fingerprint button. So that's how it is. Let me actually show you the fingerprint scanner speed right now. I'll just double tap and it will go to sleep. And here, if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, just notice how fast it unlocks. So yeah, very fast unlocking experience with the fingerprint scanner, no problem so far. But let me show you the pickup gesture if it's working. I just put the device on the desk and just pick it up on my hand. And as you can see, the pickup gesture is actually working so beautifully. So pickup gesture is working perfectly fine. And that's just a really unique feature. To have now again even from the always on display double tap to wake and stuff everything is working fine and even when you have the always on display turned off double tap to wake will be working fine now here let me show you the face unlock and with that i'll just swipe up and as you can see it has the black border on the front camera and it unlocks let me show you up close with the front camera there is that black border and if i put the device or point the device towards my face it unlocks let me show you one more time so yeah the face unlock speed it's pretty fast no problems now here again from the always on display this is how the animation actually looks like very beautiful animation of the locking and unlocking and here let me show you the app lock this is how the ui looks like of the app lock if i just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks and goes straight wherever i left it so yeah the face unlock fingerprint and the app lock everything is working fine talking about basic things yes the dm info shows as l1 here so that means netflix or amazon prime video should be working on 1080p also the ir blaster works perfectly fine here no issues also, the safety net passes right out of the box here, so you can use banking apps without any worries. And the Google Photos does offer the Pixel Unlimited Backup for photos and videos, and that's just a really impressive feature to have right out of the box. Now, let's talk about the cameras. Well, this is how it looks like, and I would say yes, it's a MIUI camera, but it is not the Leica camera or not even the latest Leica camera V5 or something. But yeah, this is a really optimized camera that I have to say. It has a 0.66x or ultra wide angle lens feature. The 1x option is also working. The 2x option is also working. If you go into the portrait mode, yes, that too is working fine with the rear camera. Even with the front camera, as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. No problems with that. So everything is very optimized with this camera, but we do have the 64 megapixel mode as well. Then if you go into the video settings, you do have up to like 4K 30 FPS option with the rear camera. And with the front camera, you will get up to 1080p 30 FPS only. And the documents mode and stuff, everything will be working fine there is the enhanced mode even there is the pro mode and you can shoot pro mode videos up to again 4k 30 fps even the 1080p 60 fps option and stuff will be working perfectly fine no need to worry about that so yeah this is a really stable camera that i have to say even the super macro lens and stuff everything is working fine and i'll take some photos and show you some samples over here Overall, I would say the MIUI camera is a really great option to have right out of the box in this particular ROM.
Now let me show you with the test UFO website, it only shows 80 FPS over here, but yeah, 120 Hertz overall in the UI is actually working fine. You do not need to worry about it. So here, as you can see, even like switching between apps and stuff, it's very fast experience, no problems whatsoever you will face. Even let me show you while opening Play Store and stuff, the animation everywhere, it's just fast, no problems that you will face overall. And yeah, this is a really, really good experience because I was earlier using the call twist there. It was stuck with 60 Hertz. But yeah, with this ROM, there is no problems like that. Even while Twitter scrolling or X scrolling and stuff, it's a very smooth, the battery smooth experience you will get over here. Of course, this Redmi Note 10 Pro has a mid-range chip, 732G, so that's not the most powerful one. So it cannot handle really like always 120 Hertz. But yeah, definitely I'd say it's working very fast, no problems whatsoever with this particular ROM. And the 120 Hertz experience, it's pretty fine overall in the UI over here. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test to give you an idea about the overall UI performance of this ROM. We have the personalization and in here you will get all the customization. Now first of all everywhere you will see these animations even in the personalization settings and if you go into the Bluetooth settings and stuff you will get to see all of these animations. They definitely looked so dope and in here let me show you the lock screen settings. We have the always show when charging. This is the edge lighting, display media cover art, pocket detection, power menu. You can enable or disable it on the lock screen. These are privacy features you can say and we have the fingerprint authentication and error vibration, ripple effect and the battery info. And the lock screen clock format you can change from right here and you can actually customize this one. You can just swipe over here to change the lock screen clock styles. And yeah, this is not showing up <laughs> properly because of the wallpaper, I guess. And we have even more clock screen clock size customization from here. And even the format, you can change single line and double line. And we have the date style. You can also change that from right here. I have been using it with the Oppo Sans. So yeah, for me, this is how it looks. It looks super cool, I have to say. With the nothing dot font and stuff, it looks super dope. If I enable the always on display, let me show you. This is how it looks. So yeah, overall, in terms of the like nothing font and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. No need to worry about that. Let me show you the miscellaneous settings. In here, we have the game space right here. So you can add any game to get the overlay. We have the Google services and the parallel space option is also there. You can like add any app to use two accounts of like WhatsApp or Telegram or Facebook, whatever. And we have the smart pixels, system manager and the weather settings. Unlock higher FPC in games is there. Then the Google camera spoof option is there. Then the unlimited Google photo storage and the Netflix spoof is also there. If you scroll down more, we have the floating button, the rotate button, and we have the layout of this. You have the compact, left leaning, right leaning, etc. options. And the hide IME button space option is there. Then the Android P style and the screen of animation and the swipe quick screenshot is also there. And you can actually use it. We have the share, edit, delete, Google Lens, and even the capture mode feature is present. So you get plethora of options for this screenshot. In the notifications, we have the colored quick setting notification and we have the alert slider notification, reticker, use app colored background option is there. You can use it if you want. We have the noise notification, then the blur media artwork and the fade kind of stuff, then the heads up, you can disable less boarding heads up is there. Clear all button, you can actually enable it for the notifications and the button style you can change even. And we have the blink flashlight for incoming call, ignore DND and the blink rate, you can change. We have the quick settings right here, then we get the battery percentage over here with the quick settings and we have the auto brightness icon. Brightness slider, you can have it on show always, even the position you can change to the bottom and we have the columns, rows, etc. And the dual tone quick settings, then if you scroll down mode, we have the background transparency. I have been using with the 54% and this is how transparent and blurry it looks. And we have the header image options and you will get about 75 header image options. Just notice this is how it will look. So yeah, that's cool. And we have the custom quick setting header image. You can use any image as header image over here. And we have the quick setting page transition. You can have this like animation. This is the animation I'm talking about. You can actually change this animation if you want from here, play through options. Then we have the quick quick setting style. You can actually change the quick setting style from here. I have been using it with a thin line and this is how it looks again with that. Then we have the UI style. You can change it to Android 11 for some reason if you want. In the sound settings, we have the pulse, the screenshot sound, adaptive playback and the volume media output, volume steps, etc. Then we have the in-call vibration options as well. Let me go back. We have the status bar settings. Then we have the battery bar. The battery style, you can actually change between plethora of options. I have been using again with the landscape iOS 16. This is what I like over here. Looks so beautiful. And let me go back. We have the battery percentage next or inside the icon. And you can change the right left options. And we have the 4G icon, Bluetooth battery status, and the clock and date and the combined signal icons, etc. 
then the mic camera privacy icon colored icons you can enable if you want if you scroll down more we have the quick pull down as well then the roaming indicator status bar icons are also there so you can enable the headset bluetooth etc icons wi-fi standards icon you can enable and the show notification count option is also there you can enable it then the logo position logo style etc you can enable if you enable it as you can see the rising os logo pops up and you can actually change the logo to like these many options plethora of options are here in the user interface we have the font style and again plethora of fonts you can notice from right here we have the oneplus fonts the nothing font etc all these things are still there we have this in.55 and with that i think this is the best implementation of the nothing dot font because in the like contextual texts it is with the nothing dot font otherwise it's normal fonts for the time being i'm gonna be using the oneplus slate let me go back we have the system icon packs right here and plethora of icon packs are here just notice how many you can choose from we have the monet theme engine customization we have the accent color the custom color background color and the luminance the chroma factor 10 background etc you can customize let me go back we have the navbar style and you can choose it if you are using the two or three button navigation and we have the signal icon styles as well plethora of options are here and you can choose any signal icon that you are willing to use we also have the nothing dot options again over here so again this is the best one that you can use if you want to have whole nothing ui experience and we have the system shapes and these are the options for that then the volume panel styles you can also change i have been using the gradient style and with that this is how it looks like you can expand the volume panel just like this and we have the wi-fi icon styles as well then the about phone style you can actually change it i have been using it with the centered wallpaper big option then the settings contextual message search bar style random settings header image and we have the settings style changing option you can use the oxygen os or color os option then the legacy oxygen OS option that's the default one i guess and i have been using with the ions card ui looks so beautiful so yeah pretty much i would say the rising os has amazing amount of customizations this is one of the best amount of customization all of the customizations are like a very very mature and everything is working perfectly fine it's definitely baked really well in the ui so that is what i like about the rising OS. so i would say this is a really good rom that you can try the rising OS latest build it's a really solid option for the redmi note 10 pro at least let me know down there in the comments what do you guys think about this rom please share this video out with your friends if you want them to know about the latest rising OS and how it's working on the redmi note 10 pro guys Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.